Hello and welcome back. Today we will be doing a starting steps video with the strongest single state start in the entire game, which is Transvaal. Transvaal's got a few unique things going on for it, despite being, you know, a relatively uh, weak start. Uh, well, they're really not that weak. The, what this 81 would suggest is that we're kind of weak, but Transvaal has some features that make it very strong. As far as the uniqueness goes, we do start off with a highly, highly discriminatory um, sort of... Uh, thing going on because we barely have any accepted pops. We have 10k accepted pops and we have, uh, you know, a few hundred thousand pops in total. And so this will be a unique feature and we will have to play around this, you know, building universities more aggressively than normal because of qualifications issues. Also, uh, it is a very small start, but it does have pretty good mappy. We have coal states and iron mines, uh, you know, in the same state. And so building up the our initial industrial base will be very, very easy. Unfortunately, we don't have a logging, but a lot of logging but this is okay. But really the feature that makes Transvaal so good uh, is we will have 12 gold mines total appear here. And then in Orania, which we will be taking, 16 gold mines will appear. And this makes this kind of the best region to ever expand any anywhere, you know, or for anyone. Um, just going into Transvaal is incredibly strong. Uh, but if you already start there, you get it anyways. And so, um, you know, if you're thinking of playing a, a more RP type of style uh, and you want to kind of expand organically, perhaps, which I don't think we're going to do this run. I think we're going to maybe try and push it a little bit uh, because of something we'll kind of get to in just a moment uh, but if you were just kind of expanding out here this is an excellent place base to expand from and there are some nice mappy you know states up here uh, as well uh, but for the most part you're not going to see too much coal plus iron uh, other than this but getting a ton of rubber is going to be really strong with the very strong tooling pms now um, another unique thing about Transvaal is you can actually form the UK as Transvaal. So it's really good for a meme run. And if this run goes along, this will be what we're attempting to do. Uh, you have to first get rid of Cape Colony. And once you get rid of Cape Colony, you can form Cape Colony. And they will have two primary cultures. You see English and Boer. Uh, because we have the Boer culture, uh, we are going to be able to form Cape Colony. And once we form Cape Colony, then we will have the English culture. And if you have the English culture and there is no United Kingdom, then you can form the United United Kingdom, which allows you to, you know, as starting as a single state, eventually form the United Kingdom, which is uh, quite an amusing little thing. Now, the first things first, whenever you start any sort of run, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to come into the government tab and ask yourself, do I want to re-roll for any specific thing? And, you know, if we were trying to do the most push strat, uh, strat possible, we might want to do this. You could, for example, get a Democrat on your uh, landowners because they actually are not in charge of the government at the start, which is a bit of a, you know, interesting thing. But I think we're pretty satisfied with what we just rolled with our kind of first look in, which was we have a jingoist, uh, which is going to support frontier colonization, which is actually a law that we can pass straight away. And so uh, this is somewhat attractive here. And so I think what we're going to do, well, we might go colonial exploitation, but, uh, you know, we can try and do frontier uh, with just our, it won't make these rural folk mad, uh, but just getting colonization in will be kind of our first uh, order of business. And then we will be looking to you know, do some economic uh, reformation uh, because we can probably try and proc corn laws here because we only have a small order of sell orders in the market. If we export all of these and we push the exports, we should be able to trigger the corn laws. And so this will be kind of our opening salvo plan. Um, throughout this run, we are going to really focus on, uh, you know, try trying to explain and talk about discrimination uh, and ways to play around it, ways to play as a really small country, which is kind of, you know, what we're getting. We're probably going to join the UK market and then also uh you know of course gold being extremely overtuned and to you know kind of talk about that we're probably going to lean into the spreadsheet a little bit but we'll get to that when we get to it so we are going to be improving relations with the uk and then using the rest of our diplomacy or our influence to just float uh for the decreased uh you know or the increased rather uh, decay for infamy um for our authority we are using zero uh consumption uh, taxes because we really don't have a lot of goods we need to tax or can tax anyways and also because we are playing as a single state uh, at least at this point in time decrees are incredibly valuable and so instead we're putting in four decrees which are going to be pretty useful and might be a little bit unusual for most kind of normal starts. Uh, we're putting in road maintenance 10% state construction efficiency is an absolutely tremendous modifier and for this juncture it will apply to everything we're building um, it also gives us infrastructure uh, which is going to be kind of nice but we for now at least care a little bit more about the construction efficiency 
but uh, the infrastructure will definitely play take play later. We are not doing emergency l relief, but we are doing promote social mobility. This is going to give us both education access and qualifications. Qualifications are going to be really sticky and really a quite a big problem, especially when it comes to the military or really anything. But it's going to be hard for us to recruit troops back up, and we might have lulls where we actually can't engage in any sort of military action because of all our, all of our troops are at, are at like three four hundred you know army, and so we're going to keep that in. And to that end, we're also going to keep enlistment efforts in. Uh, that way we can have trading rate, uh, which can, you know, kind of boost the thing. I think this doesn't affect qualifications, though. And so we it's still going to be a little bit of a struggle, but it gives us a whole ton of, uh, you know, a potential, uh, what is it, uh, cons conscripts, uh, of which we're going to conscript up to a total army of 12 here. Uh, that way we can, you know, have a little bit of a go at Aranya. That way we can kind of secure our future gold. Um, we are also going to, once we join a market, use greener grass campaigns in order to try and lead most both migrate more migration here and finally encourage resource industry will apply this mines throughput will apply to gold and so this is going to be something that we keep it on for quite a long time in both Transvaal and Freestadt. In fact, we're very likely to use road maintenance in both of these states as well, and maybe even greener grass campaigns in both of these states. You know, generating revenue through consumption taxes is decent, but when you're looking at like these very, very small amounts, this is going to be very small relative to the amount of minting we're going to be getting from just encouraging resource industries. And so it's going to be the case that we're probably not going to use a consumption tax for a very long time. Um, now, for our very open here, we can build a construction sector, but we're not going to yet be able to make use of the iron mines. Uh, we're not going to be able to do the iron mines PM, and something unfortunate will happen if when we build our very first construction sector. And we can basically afford one. Uh, we can increase taxes to kind of afford a little bit more, but it's really not a lot more. We'll really get to crank off once we hit gold. But we can afford one construction sector. But the first construction sector you build, what it's going to do is it's going to start private queue allocation. Before then, you have control of your entire construction queue. And since we have 100% control and we don't like have an enormous investment pool built up, we would rather have a little bit more control at the start. So we're going to open up by just building a logging camp. And then once we you know get into the British market or can at least trade with them, then we will consider building our first construction sector. But things are going to be a little bit slow and we are going to build way more universities uh, you know, relative to a normal start. Uh, and so this is going to slow down and have to be something we consider whenever we're thinking of adding some construction. So this is kind of how we have set up our initial start. Uh, and then we are trying to pass colonial resettlement. That's the reason why we're not spending more of our authority because we are trying to get this minus 25% enactment time. If you're above, uh, you know, 90% authority, this is extremely strong. And so what we can actually do is we can come here and then we will come be over 90, not authority, over 90 legitimacy. Since we are over 90 legitimacy, we will also get another minus 25 percent enactment time the first cut it by a quarter the second cuts it by a third because we have a total of minus 50 percent enactment time so we will get to enact real fast and this is perhaps another reason why you know building this logging camp will be good we can't really deficit spend if we take a look here we are an insignificant power this is going to mean if we come a look in the modifiers and finding the the, the what is it the interest rate and modifiers is always a pain because i don't remember exactly where it is but our interest rate is going to be sufficiently high uh, that because we are not at least a major power that, you know, deficit spending is not going to be something that we want to do. And we can't read, so let's find it. Okay, so here we are, and we see our loan interest rate is going to be uh, a full... Wait, why do we have two of these values? Hmm... Well, it's either 20% or 25%, but in either case, both of these are not anything we would want to pay. They're super, super, we can't deficit spend into this. It's much like being an insignificant power. Um, you know, when you are a great power and you have, uh, you also have uh, laissez-faire, you will actually only pay 4% interest just for a little bit of a comparison. You can kind of get away with laissez-faire major power, but this is not gonna be something we wanna spend into. And so since we can't really afford a construction sector on iron frame, if we increase to max taxes, paying low taxes is going to make uh, quite a bit of sense here, you know, so that we can pass our first few laws much, much faster. With all that said, we are going to go for Aranya just as our very opening, and we are going to say, hey guys, why don't you uh, give us the state, and then we will uh, full mobilize everything. We will, of course, need to put someone in to push, uh, but we will do that. This guy will say, no way, and we will put in on them, raise the conscripts, and then get in. Uh, the conscripts are going to be quite a bit more than what they can muster 
monster because they are not using the enlistment efforts edict and so this war will be incredibly easy then we're going to go after gaza and then we're probably going to chill because a lot of our soldiers will be dead uh and they won't recruit up very quickly because uh the officers the officers have to have qualifications and we only have 10k people who are accepted so those qualifications for officers are hard so the uk joined against us which is fine uh, we obviously can't win because they will have uh, access to the cape colony so what we will do is we will just back down to this fight and then continue on our merry way wait how are we allowed to back down there what Okay, well, I assumed that gives the first the war goal, which was Annex Transvaal, and we just lose, and we were going to time out, and it was going to be a meme. But I guess it doesn't work like that, uh, and we just get a truce with free stat. Uh, in either case, uh, we are just going to be restarting the run and taking the exact same steps we did before, but that was a little unusual. I was, I was expecting the end game uh, thing, and that we would have to give it up, but apparently if you would have gotten annexed... Uh, by giving up a war goal, uh, by capitulating, then uh, backing down doesn't lose you anything. Uh, which is uh, interesting, but we will be restarting and taking the exact same actions. So we pick up a free stat, or we're about to, uh, but the thing we're doing before then, which we probably should have done before we even started the war, was we are setting uh, this to export prioritization. We are exporting to everyone we can so that we can get the grain over 25%. And this is critical because we want the Corn Laws event. Now we have the Corn Laws event, eventually we will roll a market liberal. So we're not going to try and pass any laws. It would have been a little bit tighter to do this beforehand, uh, but we're going to do this now we will eventually go back to monarchy so that we can go to parliamentary republic after uh but i think we're going to go uh laissez-faire and then also into uh you know free trade off the back of our market liberal that we are going to get from the corn laws event chain um anyone who's really small can generally do this pretty easy by just exporting a whole ton on the grain and also now that we have the corn laws triggered you just have to get the price of grain over 25 percent. it doesn't have to stay above it we just get to cancel all these trade routes and now we're you know our it'll come back down the price of our grain uh, but we do have to keep it on export prioritization otherwise the corn laws will go away so we have finished taking gaza and what we will be doing now is we also built a tooling workshop now that this tooling workshop is finished we are going to first we're going to put it on right iron tools this is going to be important because it will make capitalist ownership we'll go from merchant guild to uh, capitalist ownership also it takes less pops to operate uh, but then in order to keep that going we are going to import iron from uh from the british market if we go in our market there will very quickly be a shortage hey yo let's go and then we will import and not only will we import we're going to put an import prioritization on this at least at this juncture um the pm for iron is really 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 bad before you get atmospheric engine uh which is going to be the second tech we go for after stock exchange here we'll research up to 10k on atmospheric engine and then switch to lathe and then go into the atmospheric engine so that'll be good we also can shuffle around our edicts a little bit um in just a moment i think we are going to get rid of uh first of all the enlistment efforts edict uh and just kind of support these three for now in the capital or what we could do is we could promote social mobility here in free stat i think i like that uh that way we are still floating uh 22 so we can you know pass laws faster in theory we would want to assign but we are waiting for our event that is going to be a little bit better we are fine with that uh for now uh and so uh, once we get this event we will be able to go laissez-faire and this is kind of what we're waiting on we're also getting a little bit of more construction in but very importantly once we get this construction sector then this is going to open up the auto queue to build what they uh, whatever they want you have full control when you don't have one that's kind of why we just built this first and also this way we are going to have this construction sector and guess what it's going to be doing it's going to be doing iron frame buildings so we did want to get the adjacency to the uk uh that way this place could actually operate you know at a reasonable uh kind of level and then also this amount of trade will kind of help us to be able to join their customs union later because you can see it's just minus 15 we want to join their customs union very very much because uh let's take a look at the accepted pops in our nation uh by number <clears throat> 20k accepted pops and so uh, obviously we're mostly Soto we have very little Boer and so adding Boer or at least English to the mix would be really nice uh, for us being able to employ stuff up we are building one government administration because we kind of need it and then after this I think what we will do is we are going to build a university because 
even our construction sector is going to be sticky on its ability to employ up. Uh, you know, it's going to employ up, but it's going to be a little bit slow. And so by the time we get through all this, we will be about where we want to start increasing taxes back up. And then here's just on time is a modern conservative. You have to have the Voice of the People DLC to be able to use this. But here we will just take a quick look. This is a very, very important play pattern. We have a landowner. This gentleman is a jingoist. This means he supports, uh, you know, some colonial stuff and such. We want someone, so notably, he opposes, I think it's stratocratic in here. He opposes, he likes serfdom, he hates collectivized agriculture, and he also, he hates these taxes type stuff. But where's the one where he opposes, he's also a slaver, the truth hurts right now, but he doesn't like any sort of, he loves traditionalism and he hates laissez-faire. He opposes laissez-faire. And so we would like to get onto laissez-faire from interventionism. So what we do is a, an inspiration for our age. We will get a character. This character will be an agitator and he will be a market liberal. Dear market liberal loves laissez-faire, but what we can do is we can promote this guy to government by granting him leadership. This is what voice the people that you require for, uh, grant leadership. And now this gentleman is now a market liberal and so we could jump past all the market liberal laws we like uh starting first with interventionism going towards laissez-faire and so that'll be great fun for us and this will be pretty good after we do this we will probably go for monarchy uh the reason being is that presidential republic's not very good you can't swap from presidential to parliamentary so we would go monarchy just so we can later swap back to parliamentary republic but i think before we do this we will look to uh at least have our landowners be the president and so we will have to wait for at least one election we see we can raise the taxes a little bit and so and still be over this 90% threshold but raising taxes does very very little and also once we get our economy going it will be on the back of gold and so we are very likely to keep this taxes low because taxes don't increase gold income if gold is where most of your income is coming from we can make better use of just having low taxes and instead be able to you know have more have more legitimacy and also be able to pull more migrants so we can actually work the gold mines which is probably going to be the bigger throttle for us you see stuff is not employing up very quickly with shortages etc and so there's a lot going on as a result of the discrimination so we probably keep this keep this low so that eventually once we get in the UK's market, which I think we're going to be do, able to do just as soon as we're over 20 relations, um, then we will be able to siphon off as many migrants as possible from them. The reason we're not going after Zulu right away is because we will be stuck at, you know, 500-ish uh, on our troops for a very long time because they can't recruit up very well. Once it's around 700 per battalion, or we have three to four of these at a thousand, if you take a look, you know, they're not ticking up very fast. Once we kind of get to that situation, Situation, then we'll go after Zulu and the reason we're not going after other people is we cannot declare any interests anywhere because we are an insignificant power we really do have to wait for the gold to roll in this is going to mean that uh, relative to most other runs we are going to go nitroglycerin way earlier than what would kind of be normal this is going to be what's next on the docket after atmospheric engine all right baby now the real fun bullet begins we discovered some gold in Transvaal and also <laughs> Here's also where the horror begins, because these things are actually going to have a hard time employing because uh, we, we're going to have some discrimination going on. And so sometimes these can't employ up all the way, but this will give us an enormous amount of minting. If we take a look, look at this minting graph. It just goes up. It goes in one direction. That direction is up. Look at this. Look at this. From the gold fields in Transvaal, it's now more than our GDP amount, uh, and these gold fields haven't even filled up yet. So this is going to be a huge source of income for us. It's going to allow us to build more construction. So I think this is actually the fastest we've ever seen gold depleted, and it's probably actually a bad thing because now we're going to have, uh, it requires more qualifications to employ these up than it does the other stuff, and we do have qualification problems overall, and so I think we're going to finish up this logging camp because it's almost done, and then we're going to be on to the gold, but we are definitely going to need some universities, and in fact, I think we're going to put the university behind the first gold mine because I would guess that we will finish this gold or this university before the gold mine fully employs. Uh, but once we have the gold mines up and going, we will be getting so, so much money. Now, of course, we're losing a ton of money now because we just lost access to the minting we had uh, gotten, so that's unfortunate. Uh, we, of course, can't let them leave uh, because we are trying to join a market and, you know, siphon off some migrants. And so this is going to be the state of affairs. But overall, it's probably a good thing that we got the iron mines, uh, the gold mines in. They will be on picks and shovels. Picks and shovels really does kind of suck uh, all the more reason to get atmospheric engine as quickly as possible which is what we are doing or what we will be doing we're going to research up to 10k then we're going to finish lathe except lathe's looking like it's going to
going to finish anyways. So hopefully we get a nice juicy natural spread and we just high roll lathe uh, nat spreading and then atmo engine and nat spreading. Uh, we'd be okay with intensive agriculture too or mechanical tools, but one of these three is really what we want to roll for our nat spread. We will, however, be allowed to now establish Transvolley Gold. We will, of course, want to do this um, just as soon as possible, which will give 5% inting, but more importantly, it will giving, be giving throughput on these gold mines and construction bonus on these gold mines, which is going to be something we really highly value. Another thing I wanted to point out is if you're on playing on patch 1.5.12, do not pass laissez-faire like we did, although access to the company is pretty nice. But the reason not to pass laissez-faire is that it's currently bugged out with how much control of the queue it gets. Normally, the control the control of the private queue is directly proportional to the amount of money they're putting in. However, currently it's a little bit bugged out. I mean, we have full control right now, but the way the bug is working is that uh, if they are contributing even a little bit to the investment pool, then they will gain full 75% control, which is not proportional to the amount that they're contributing we will see that throughout this run so we will have less control than normal but overall you can play around it and it's not too big a deal having access to this company will be particularly nice because this is going to be constructed way faster it's going to be constructed faster both off of you know the construction speed we are getting from our company but also the construction speed that we are getting from our dear edict which is giving us 10% state construction efficiency. So we're getting around 30 state construction efficiency. So instead of like 32 weeks or whatever, uh, it's going to be taking us 24. So we're not too terribly close to um, the trade agreement with the UK. So I think we're just going to give up the obligation here um, and try and get things rolling. This way we can invest. We won't have to have this uh, tax waste. We are really suffering here. We would want to delete our construction sector. We can't delete our construction center because we have the rev brewing. It is going to be extraordinarily painful, but we're going to get dug out from it from the gold um, and we will be refunded the bureaucracy of our trade routes because obviously we're not running any trade routes anymore uh, and we are inside the British market which heralds kind of a new sort of development we have low attraction right now we don't like that and so we're gonna come in and we're gonna swap up some decrees uh, now we perhaps well we kind of want to pass this quick so we can get out from underneath this and that maybe try and pass poor laws but it's going to be pretty important that we start uh doing greener grass campaigns in both the states we are planning on building in and so we're going to do this i think we're going to kill the social mobility on free stat and we'll instead be floating for minus 12 percent enactment time um hoping to get this through faster but then once we finish this law i think we will uh fully spend all of our authority but with the help of you know our edict giving us plus 50%, we will have high attraction and hopefully we can begin siphoning off these migrants from the British market and notably these guys will be ones that we will very likely uh, you know be accepting. We're in fact getting migrants from Holland uh, and Cape Colony and Friesland which we know we accept these guys and so plus 1.8k we have like 20k total accepted pops and so this represents a 10% increase you know in accepted pops and so this is going to really help us be able to employ up a lot of these sticky buildings and also being inside the market is going to help us you know be able to actually sell stuff at a better price buy stuff at a better price because our economy is so small um, this will represent much much better prices overall for us we still are in a bit of pain the auto queue is still going to be annoying if you see here uh, we can see now the bug where they're getting control of 75 percent of the queue uh, but they are not contributing uh, 75 percent the construction goods are here they are not contributing a full 75 actually they might be contributing a full 75 percent here uh, but this uh, this queue or this pool is going to run out pretty quick and then uh yeah anyways we are developing we are in a little bit of a squeeze here uh but this squeeze is going to be more than fine for us especially as we get the gold up and going because it will be giving us a lot of minting once we get atmo engine because the initial pm is pretty bad so we placated the boyos by starting to enact corn laws and we are occasionally getting you know a rural thing going on in the private construction and we're only getting three construction from our construction sector and we're running a huge negative uh, balance with an absolutely huge interest rate so what we're going to do is now that we don't have to worry about uh, the revolution or the revolution's not brewing we will delete our construction sector uh, this will also make sure that we have full control uh, yet again of the construction 
Q, and we will be able to focus up on the gold. What's going to be interesting to do, and this guy's president, which is also super nice, because now that this man is president, uh, we will be able to, you know, swap and be a little bit more comfortable when we swap to monarchy. But coming back to what we are saying is this is about to finish here, this gold mine, and we're going to get to see how slow it employs up. Like this building, the margin's fine. Still can't employ up for the longest time. Still hasn't even gotten the first full level. We will be kind of swapping over some PMs. Um, but we still haven't gotten to the first full level employed. And we see here it's got 100 employees. Uh, but it's going to be sticky in the way it employs uh, overall. This one's going to help out a lot. The wealth education access. This is going to go a long way because it's going to give us much more education access. And to be fair, we also have a few levels of education from here. We're actually going to add one uh, from our, uh, you know, the devout law institution that we start with so that's going to be really helpful i think we're going to up the law enforcement too because these are relatively cheap institutions only costing 10 bureaucracy we probably should have done that a little bit earlier uh so that was a little bit of a leak here but oof. this is a little rough we're going to take the kind of lesser of these but this is this is we don't like this but as this comes up, we should be able to, you know, have a little bit of help. The thing is, is it's not a lot of minting until we get um, onto Atmospheric Engine. With Lathe Research, that decreases the cost of Atmospheric Engine from, uh, you know, uh, being 12.5k to 10k. But here's the moment of truth. What will we not spread? Okay, we get Intensive Agriculture, which is not too bad because I think we're going to go Atmospheric Engine. Well... We could go either go atmospheric engine into nitroglycerin or atmo engine into railways. I think, I think we had better do railways, but we were very tempted to go nitroglycerin. But nitroglycerin is almost certainly going to be after this, and so this is going to be kind of our research setup for the next bit with our really heavy gold focus. I think it's going to be even better than going water tube boiler, as good as water tube boiler is, just to discover all this gold, uh, because there's gold in them hills, and we're here to discover it. Okay, the gold mines specifically are actually employing up pretty well, and the reason for this is because they are on merchant guilds uh, which is kind of a little bit of an interesting phenomenon the thing that has really hard time us having getting is the capitalists and if you take a look here and we hover here it will tell us that hey we can't hire the capitalists the aristocrats they don't want to switch jobs and we have such little uh, you know accepted pops these are our pops these are our accepted pops, plus Dutch. And so um, the Dutch is, by the way, courtesy of the migration from being in the UK's market. And so as soon as we switch to atmospheric engine, we're probably going to have a little bit of a difficulty getting these to employ up all the way as well. And so it is going to be, uh, you know, this is why we built the university, where we're using money for a university when we don't even have a second construction sector. Um, now, we're starting to gain a little bit of money. Do want to kind of flush some of this out. We are getting an enormous amount from minting here. Um, and so this is going to help us out a lot. And that is courtesy of this 10 stack of gold being discovered. So, you know, like, let's let's look at our balance. We have a national revenue of 9.9K. Oh, okay, okay. 8.5K of it is coming from the minting. We are running a pure minting economy. Why would you tax anyone more than zero when you're running the full minting economy? And so we could add a little bit of construction right now. I think we're going to do it but after we finish these gold mines just so that we have full control of this queue uh, up to the point where we get a gold mine. But then we'll, you know, add a little bit of construction ahead of that logging camp we had in Freestadt. Um, but we do want to get these through and done and also halfway to atmospheric engine it's going to be super nice pop off and we won't even have to source the coal ourselves because we're in the us uh, the uk's market and so we could just use their coal and instead focus properly on you know either logging camps or uh gold mines at least as much as we're able to and then also start transitioning the iron and coal uh, which is very nice to have the pair of these together and also very nice to have uh like it it's super perfect because we get to build the steel here the st these filled feet into the steel we get to build explosives here the explosives feed into all three mine types you know uh coal iron and gold uh and so this is going to it's just there's going to be so much high efficiency here on top of us having obviously the very best resource in the game and perhaps we should actually consult the spreadsheet to actually talk about why it's such a good resource so let's just come into the spreadsheet real quick and talk about this so um it, it is one of the most disgustingly efficient PMs in the game. It's tied with Sulfur, which is just kind of the best PM in the game, but the problem is is there's really not that much demand for Sulfur overall in your economy, so it's a little bit tough. Uh, Goldmine is like, uh, the PM from an efficiency perspective is exactly the same. And we're kind of concerned with net construction efficiency, or how efficient it is per per 
week of construction and you can see here on picks and shovels not that great atmospheric engine starts to pick up and starts to be good just for uh you know kind of uh reference on a per construction basis sawmills are around 100 and so sawmills is really good uh but this is just the output that you get from the gold see gold has a base price uh it will always sell at the base price and so let's come back into the game uh uh coming back in we will see that's this that's what this positive balance is and by the way it's huge it's one of the best pms in the game this positive balance here it will always be at base price it will always be at 100 it doesn't include the minting so all that tremendous efficiency doesn't include the minting which is going to be you know half of this we are going to get that in minting and that is insane that is straight up revenue uh that is a free money modifier it's printed from nothing and so we get to re-inject this into our economy and stimulate our economy really 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 hard and it's going to allow us to pop off really hard i mean obviously like this is just disgusting like 90 percent of our economy right now is gold and to be fair we have this uber small start we only have a gdp of two million we started out with a gdp of basically nothing and this company is going to do us uh you know pretty good once we get on atmo engine but this is just uh if you want to start that just feels like you just like get some jet fuel and you just like do a line of it or whatever that's this uh it's it's just a tremendous tremendously strong because you go from having basically nothing to having these like absolute gold mines that are just absolute bang it let's go we're going to war with Zulu, but for the record, if you just take a look, we've barely recruited anyone up. And so this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying the qualifications are really the problem. Uh, we're still going to build that construction sector, but, you know, it's a little bit tempting to build a university in front of it just for qualifications reasons. But uh, we will mobilize the army. We will mobilize the conscripts. We don't have our edict anymore. We're kind of hoping that Zulu just backs down. We are going to, you know, add a bunch of war goals to encourage them to back down. We want them to back down. We don't want... Actually, we're not going to assign to the front because then we actually suffer attrition. And normally, this is not too big a deal. I mean, it's kind of a big deal in 1.5, but uh, for us, it's actually kind of a really big deal because we can't recruit up pops very well at all. And so uh, this is, oh man, we failed out on this. This sucks. All right. We might bomb out on poor laws because the people in government really don't like it. So we're very likely to hit a pretty negative setback. It doesn't look like they're backing down here, which is unfortunate. Um, we are already mobilized though. So why don't we, you know, stick on to the front now and get ready to push. We're also going to recruit a guy for just defending. Um, I think it's pretty uh, standard to have a defensive guy and an offensive guy because uh, this guy will generally be commanding on defense uh, and the other guy will be commanding on offense because plus 10% defense and then plus 10% offense and so at the very least this is going to be if you are going to be having an army that's going to do both attacking and defending having someone both attacking and defending is going to be useful once we get through him we are starting to build a fleet behind this and we will actually put the first one up here it's going to recruit up really slow because it's 100 percent discriminated pops here uh you know to recruit into this and we haven't even incorporated this and so it's going to be a bit of a struggle to recruit up but with just a single boat we will be able to get to places like mara that have uh literally no boat uh and they also have uh more importantly no battalions and so we will be able to get in on these places for free uh and then be able to push them and so this will be at least somewhat useful once we have mara for example then we could just attack Oman straight up and just push uh of course gonna be having just general problems because we do not have troops and we can't recruit up troops very much because we're highly discriminated we really are just a nation of gold this is all we have uh at least at this juncture we're actually getting clapped hmm. that's no good all right so we made sure to have all the mobilization options on and now we're actually starting to win some battles which is going to be good uh that was a little bit spooky uh definitely had that a little bit in testing where we couldn't really fight anyone because qualification problems and so uh you know in transvaal where we have most of these we will add the second university and we will also add the first university here in freestadt uh kind of in the back of this and so maybe we really don't want this construction sector because what this is going to represent for us is we're going to get you know five which probably not going to be able to recruit all the way and then we're going to be getting you know five construction that is 50 percent more construction but then we unleash the auto queue to just spend 75 percent and to be fair, we have a decent reserve, so we kind of do would want to spend 
through that reserve and so maybe we'll, we're okay with it. I think we'll just build the construction sector and then look to possibly delete it down the line if we don't, uh, you know, kind of pop off into it. But the second thing is we're about to get ammo engine and once we get ammo engine we actually will be popping off. So um, especially if these gold mines start to collapse and once they start to collapse then we will be able to look, look at that balance dude. Look at that minting. Just 5k for free when like we just <laughs> that's half our economy and so um yeah this is going to be good for us we're also going to be getting war reps from them but that's really not what we wanted but what else we're going to be getting from them is since they're our subject and we didn't annex them they get 10 free construction as well so it's effectively giving us some free construction so that's going to be really really nice um and the next wars are going to be we'll separate this into a literal one stack uh that way we suffer minimal attrition and we'll go for mara and bahrain these are the guys who have zero uh defense and then we'll maybe look to do a little bit more expansion but it's mainly going to be you know gold and chill for from here for a little while is the auto queue just the auto queue just decided we wanted paper didn't they terrible don't i'm not sure i like this paper thing it's not terrible well it's terrible but it's not terrible but it's also terrible because we kind of don't want to be using our infrastructure like that uh because we are running low on the infrastructure uh and we are quite a ways from railways and we are already using you know the construction edict and so uh, and we are out of infrastructure and free stat because the auto queue you know built a little bit of things actually it's because of this it's really because of this maybe we actually just cancel this as a result but yeah, I do believe these each take like one infrastructure. Do they not? No, they use 20 infrastructure. So this is why we have no available infrastructure there anymore. So our gold gets depleted in free stat, which of course means way less free money for us. I think we're going to add some construction and also us unleashing the private queue. Now this is a big part of why we are getting, look at their investment pool. Our oh man, our investment pool is still growing because those gold mines are so insane. But now we are getting investment pool transfer. And so this is part of why our money's growing. We don't want it to kind of go up too much. And so we're going to put this at the back of the queue though. Uh, we're going to just add these gold mines. We will want to build them, even though it's going to build us way over infra. And then we're going to just add a couple construction sectors here. But now you see, now you see this is the crux of the problem. We are basically out of infra uh, entirely, except for here where this is not incorporated and also they don't like us very much so um i think we're gonna have to start incorporating here i mean we don't even make that much from taxes anyways who cares if we're way over right yeah okay that barely affects the bottom line yeah we'll take that it's 21 years i understand but we will be getting access to institutions one of which is included is like uh our education institution which is going to help us to employ up in there uh and also it's going to give us you know our uh our institution for policing which is going to allow us to actually build here a little bit more effectively and this is kind of the only place we can build so um yeah we're gonna need to be doing that gold feeds depleted again uh we can't let them leave of course because we do want that construction modifier or that immigration modifier that way we can actually employ stuff up you can see we're still getting you know all of these from the dutch who are in the market which is quite nice all right now the fun begins and by fun i mean horrors now the horrors begin uh because we were we're still gonna have a hard time employing up all the way here hopefully it's not too too bad but i'm guessing it will be it does help out a little bit that we i think i mean I think we can technically shuffle between picks and shovels and atmospheric engine to artificially, uh, you know, push this up actually. Um, but this is going to be, it's going to be sticky from here because we're not going to be able to get the ownership class. Uh, and so um, this is going to be a problem with all of our mines moving forward. However, they're going to give us also way more minting. Um, we are building a little bit more construction. We don't want to be, you know, we don't want to be running over the money wise, but we already have basically negative taxes. I mean, I suppose we could start doing this, but that costs us nothing. Look at how little that costs us, bro. We should have been doing this the whole time. It's because we, like, we're so not used to having this disgusting an amount of our money coming from minting, but this is the state of affairs. Um, and so this will allow us to pass some laws faster as well. We do want to eventually go back onto monarchy here, but can we maybe get rid of slave trade in the meantime? No, maybe not. Hmm. This is a little bit pain because we don't want to get them in with this much power, really. Uh, and so slightly less power would be preferable. Or we don't want the... Well, actually, the capitalists are going to take over pretty quick here, actually. So maybe we don't need to worry about it. And so if we go monarchy... Yeah, let's just go monarchy. This is just so we could go parliamentary after. Uh, and it also makes the uh, the landowners really expensive. Man, this is a just absolute psychosis mode where we just don't care about this. Uh, because, like, it's such a small percentage. The gold is just so powerful. 
<laughs> we're making so much money. I've never had. I've never had a uh, full. I don't think I've ever had full gold re gold reserves while being very nearly uh, entirely negative on bureaucracy deficit simultaneously. This is a this is a phenomenon. This is a time. So regarding Freestadt, we have built a first a gold mine, and then of course employment is a little bit sticky, right? And so then the second thing we build here is the university. The university is also going to take qualifications to employ up, but overall it will be pretty good for keeping the qualifications up. I think what we're going to do is we're going to kick this gold mine to the back of the queue because it can't even employ up anyways. This one's can't employ up, um, and so it's not going to be useful to us. This is, again, a qualifications issue, uh, which is why, you know, this edict for, you know, getting migration is so important because it is getting us the people we need in order to actually employ stuff up. Now, I'm pretty sure we can do this trick uh, where we are going to switch back to picks and shovels. This is kind of a little bit of an exploit. Uh, and then on picks and shovels, it'll be able to employ up much, much, much better, and it will be able to get up to 5k, and then once it's at 5k, then we swap it back to atmospheric engine pump. We get mechanical tools, which is going to be nice. We just get to kind of straight away swap this over to steel tools. Uh, but what this will do is we will be able to apply it pretty fast here. Uh, this is just like straight up super exploitative, but we will be able to play up super fast here. And then we can just swap. Ooh, uh, is that a play launched against us? Oh my god, Amon landed us. We were going for Amon. We full landed them. And then now they land us. Oh, how the turns table. Well, okay, I guess we got to come back. Luckily, we have this guy at least at the HQ, so he could slow them down. Uh, but that's not exactly how we drew it up. I didn't even... Uh, that's not how we drew it up. Oh, luckily that one guy apparently can resist their entire army. But anyways, um, I guess in theory... I guess we'll start doing with this with everything, huh? Just swap and then swap back because it keeps, it maintains employment, it just swaps people over. And so I guess we could do that with everything where we just go crude tools, employ up, please, employ up, please. And then when it employs up, which it could do much better because shopkeepers are have much easier qualifications, then we just swap to the other form of tools. Uh, to be fair, the employment on this one's much, much slower, but we can just, you know, swap steel tools. And we can do this for every single one of these. Uh, you know, a lot of these aren't having tremendous problems because they've uh, gone up over time uh, but I think that this is if we're trying to min-max super super hard this is what we would want to do in the gold mines we're just going to kind of do it the slow way though where we're just going to keep on atmospheric engine pump and you know take our licks and the fact that the stuff's employing up kind of slow um, although there's a journal entry uh, that's pretty good the atmospheric engine and so we need to have a building at least uh, level to equal the level three. Oh, it has to be coal, iron, sulfur, lead. <laughs> uh, doesn't qualify if it's gold, which is a bit interesting. So we could build the iron mine here up to level three and then employ it using the 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 methodology. This is where we have you know our construction sector. So there's plenty of iron demand here locally. Um, maybe we'll do that. But here's the real problem: infra. That's the enemy. Okay, so diplomatically, we have gone into Marjatine, and now we're going into Gladi. The entire point is we don't have any boats, because we only have just the one boat, just the one frigate, because these other places can't recruit up here because of discrimination. Uh, so we're probably going to build a university here, to be honest, just so we can recruit up on the boats. But until then, we have to expand out from Mara. So we've subjugated Kathiri. Uh, we you know, subjugated Oman, uh, and then we took this, because this does kind of go across the strait, because reasons, uh, and now we're going to get an, a little bit of an extra front. Once we annex these guys, we will be able to colonize Kenya, which is going to be super nice for us, because we might have a chance uh, to, you know, fight the UK over this, uh, and actually be able to, you know, maybe ingress into the north here, and they get the south, something like this. We would prefer to get the bag, but, you know, this is unlikely to happen. And also down here, we've uh, executed, you know, the plan of picks and shovels plan and so picks and shovels fully recruited up and now we just have to get this to recruit up uh and then i think we actually pop the atmospheric engine because we have to have you know at least 75 percent of our buildings currently we have half uh needs to have cash reserves greater than 25 percent workforce occupancy greater than 75 percent so let's actually take a look because it seems like based on that that seems to imply that these qualify right uh, and so, well, I guess these are workforce occupancy is over 75%. So why don't we have it yet? We're trying to pop this event, by the way, because this will give us a little bit of extra speed towards getting railways, which we desperately, desperately need. Of course, uh, we need, we gives us like 2.5k. And so this is going to help out quite a lot if we can manage to get it. And so, um, 
we do want this to, is it just a matter of getting this to recruit up? Let's just double check the event chain here. Uh, more than 75% have to have, uh, currently, I don't know why it says 50% eligible buildings, sulfur, coal, iron, okay. But it's just, it's just this then, no? I, don't, I think that's all we built. I think that's all, oh, or is that not all we built? Is that not all we built? Because we annexed some stuff. Do we have any? Ah, ah. So this is on picks and shovels anyways, so it should be recruiting up. Uh, but is it going to get all the way there? Okay, so let's let it recruit up. And then, once it's above 75%, and I think it had to be above certain cash reserve, now we do the good old swisheroo. Switcheroonie. Uh, and so the cash reserves do have to come on up. They should be coming on up. And then we should be able to pop the event. Now, what was the cash reserves we needed? Hopefully they didn't have a... Oh, they did have an iron mine. Yikes. And so <laughs> we'll instead have to pick some shovels our way up. And then we will be able to get this uh, ideally. So currently half because these ones are a little bit lagging here. And so we have to get them above 75% occupancy. We will be back once we finish this, uh, you know, journal. All right, so we're about ready to pop the journal. We just have to do this and then wait for it. Uh, it has enough employment, but we do have to wait a little bit for the cash reserves to come on up, which they should come on up pretty quickly because the weekly balance, well, I suppose if we build a construction sector here, it would come up uh, faster, but we get the proletarian revolt. That's super not ideal. We'd be, it'd be a lot cooler if you didn't, uh, but this will, I mean, we'll put down the revolt, but would be a lot cooler if they didn't do that, because that's gonna, you know, kill our income, and also, it's gonna kill our reserves, because they are gonna hemorrhage a bunch of money, they are gonna own some of the reserves, but we do get finally racial segregation, which we've, uh, kind of been prepping for a while now. Uh, we do want to come off of state religion sometime in the near future, yeah, we kind of really gotta get off this, uh, you guys, you don't rev there, and, but you rev here. Hmm. Let's just go freedom of conscience, just a little bit more conservative choice, and by conservative I mean the opposite of conservative, and you should be about ready, you just have to get to 12.5k, come on, this is the little engine who could, the little atmospheric engine who could, rather, uh, because we know we get 2.5k progress though, we are going to stop researching railways, and switch to nitroglycerin, because we are going to get 2.5k progress, from getting the atmospheric engine uh, journal entry, and so, because we know we are going to get that, in just a moment, man, the T's with the 0.2k off. We complete the engine, and then here we have, oh, it's 3.5k. So we have to decide, do we want to waste 1k versus tech of tech progress? I guess we're going to do that, uh, and we will get railways, uh, and then we will be able to solve our infrastructure problem. And so now that is going to be super nice for us, because that is the main, th or that's one of the throttles. The other really big throttle is, of course, uh, the fact that, Discrimination makes it hard to hire these buildings out, but once we get that kind of coming on up, that's going to help out a whole lot. Why don't we put you there, put the other guy here, and then, oh my god, where, they, where are they? Oh, they're just cruising in nowhere land. Are they trapped? Bro. I thought we moved you. You have no path? Banished the Shadow Realm. Okay, well, since our troops got banished to the Shadow Realm, which is, of course, unfortunate, we hate when that happens, we are going to swap and capitulate, because um, we would have won this Civil War really, really, really handedly. I definitely hate this bug. This bug's super obnoxious, because um, now we have our guys, our boys are Shadow Realms. We'll try and figure out how to get these guys out from the Shadow Realm. I mean, to be fair, we would have been expanding kind of around here anyways, I think. Uh, and so, but yeah, we'll just switch sides and clap. So after going uh, separation of church and state, uh, which is tor total separation rather, we're going to be going homesteading. Um, this is going to be really nice for destroying the clout of the landowners. And also, it seems to be the case that since this market liberal, normally the market liberal boyo that you get um, from corn laws dies pretty quick. Uh, and this is really, really consistent. But this guy stayed on for a while. And I'm curious if this is a result of him um, being put into the government and now being uh, the monarch. But this is rather nice because he's the leader of the IG and he's a market liberal so it's almost like having an industrialist monarch which isn't too bad um, and so we will be able to do something like swapping to homesteading without him intervening because he loves it or he doesn't have a problem with it uh, which is quite a curious and interesting little thing and then once we get that it should be easier for us to go after um, slavery and try and ban slavery because this will make them big pissed or you know trying to go after you know wealth voting or something like this uh, a variety of other ways that we can kind of try and destroy the clout and then maybe swap back back to parliamentary republic but i it is a little bit curious that this guy's stuck around so long 
also update. Uh, we are have started with our shadow army that can't leave Ethiopia. I guess we're you know playing in Ethiopia now. We have continued to push into here, which is going to give us more areas of ingress that we can colonize. We will be able to colonize Equatoria, uh, and also we have uh, gotten egalitarianism. So. I think once we get this law, uh, we might swap to prop tax after this. Uh, but prop tax really doesn't matter. It's only going to give us an additional 1,000. I wasn't sure if that was blocked or not. But, uh, you know, taking a look at our national revenue, <laughs> how much are we getting from taxes? To be fair, half of this is getting nuked and sent into oblivion from the tax waste, which we're trying to rectify right now. Um, but we're super low taxes anyways. But uh, almost all of our income is from minting. Of the 19.5k we're getting, 16.3k is coming from minting. This is the power of coal gold baby this is our entire economy effectively speaking and you know it, it is going to allow us to slingshot into something much much stronger as we like actually solve some of the qualifications and infrastructure problems which we are starting to get solved um you know coming on up we have why don't we add a couple or add one construction sector here but we have another you know three uh unis coming here and you know it's plus 20 percent is a good chunk but if we build a level 21 university here plus 200 percent qualifications it can do a whole lot uh to override you know some of the negative effects we're having here also universities have a really high wage multiplier and so uh we can see that we are doing pretty good on the migration as well um being encouraging migration and this is uh, you know helping us get a lot of growth because it's not just that we're getting migration it's that we're specifically getting migration from pops that can fill the slots of capitalists which is what we are having trouble filling and so because this is going to be uh what's going on for us it's going to help out quite a lot we're probably going to use labor saving PMs pretty aggressively here as well, mainly to try and push up SOL in order to get more traction because we have a 50% greener grass campaign. This means pushing up standard of living is going to do a whole lot for us. Uh, and one of the ways you can push up save, uh, SOL is by using labor saving PMs. So we're going to do that a little bit more aggressively than we otherwise would. Um, we haven't even finished nitroglycerin. That's probably, we're probably going to finish the episode up when we get nitroglycerin but this this little thing is at least at the very least useful and allowing us to you know use utilize our infamy decay despite our having trouble you know employing and keeping these things employed we've been kind of barely scraping by getting an army despite not really fighting many people because we've just lost so many to attrition and so i mean i guess we should be waiting longer before assigning to fronts uh but um you know this will hopefully give us equatoria maybe we can try and trade oh you know what we could we might be able to try and trade out kenya okay 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 here's the thought if we colonize somewhere else where Great Britain has colonies, I guess they don't have, is that, no, that's Danish. Where does the UK have colonies? They have colonies over here. So if we, we might be able to trade them for their Kenya colony because we have part of a Kenya colony and they have part of a Kenya colony. If you have, if you each have part of a colony and you have part of a colony elsewhere, it's a bit easier to trade. And if we can secure Kenya, that would be absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, we will progress along those lines. That's a b b b big nice. Now, we won't do mine, 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 it's all mine. We'll instead do spread the word. This 20% gold fields building throughput, this isn't going to represent a lot to us, but solving our discrimination problems by getting a ton of extra migration attraction, that will. So taking a look here, uh, before we unpause, it's plus 6.7k. And if we let it think, if we let it think, or maybe it's already thought, it might have already thought. Well, plus 8k, oh, plus 13, okay. Let's go, baby. That's a lot. In terms of percentage of the what's here, that's quite a lot. And also, you know, in terms of pop growth, that's a lot. Now, of course, we will get a negative one. Uh, but now here we have this. Of course, we have unrealistic living expectations. Now, this kind of stacks with the plus 125% bonus and the plus 50% bonus we have there from Greener Grass. So let's see. We're getting plus 5.3k. It's adjusted down a little bit, but that extra is going to modify the flat. So we will have additional flat standard of living. And so now we are going to really be popping off on the migration attraction here. And of course, pulling in, you know, the migrants, which are going to allow us to employ up the buildings and the buildings. <laughs> Let me tell you something about the buildings. The buildings that are coming in are these buildings. So why don't we actually kick one of these to the top of the queue considering this place is fully employed right now anyways and get going and so once we have the buildings you know first you get the migration attraction then you get the buildings no wait that's the wrong order once you get the buildings coming then you will get a ton of migration attraction because the peasants here are pulling this down and these are all the peasants that are discriminated against 
and so it's really hard to employ them up. But since we are getting migrants, then we can get, you know, the peasants uh, employed up once we get the migrants. And then once the peasants are employed up, now they're not pulling down the SOL anymore. So then we get much higher SOL. So this is going to be absolutely tremendous for us. Well, of course, we, for whatever reason, like uh, the auto queue decided that it was really nice to build an explosive factory here. And we're also, you know, in the market anyways uh, for the UK. And so we should be able to swap all this on. But this is gonna, one's going to be a little bit better. And this is going to be really nice as far as we got to fix some of these techs too. Uh, but this is going to be really nice as far as techs go. Uh, because not only is it giving us, you know, uh, more gold or more minting off of our gold. But also, very, very significantly, resource discovery chance plus 25%. So hopefully this will allow us to, you know, secure the last remnants of the gold that we have yet undiscovered. Um, which is going to be really... Oh, look, another 12. Oh, which probably means we're actually having, you know, infrastructure problems. So this is actually a little bit more important. So we will kick that to the top of the queue. Um, and then we still have a ton of gold left to discover in Transvaal. But we are well on our way. Uh, you know, we start off like, oh, this is because we got the swap. We started off with an economy of like 200,000. We did have to swap because a little buggy wuggy. Um, but this is going to be really nice for us. Look at the, e the economy is just cranking up so, so fast. And now we get to like pay for a lot of the gold. And we are also positive on the bureaucracy, so we could even think about starting to actually tax these people. But again, this is barely, this is like nothing. So like, uh, I think it's better for us to just keep the taxes low for now uh, with hopes of, you know, garnering bonuses in the long term. I think the bonuses are more valuable, like having uh, capitalist investment pool contribution is more valuable than the taxes at this juncture. And so we're just going to keep the taxes down. But um, soon some somewhat soon maybe we just wait until we have prop tax and then we turn it on i think i like that i think we're going to conclude the episode here we did manage to pass homesteading which is kind of to cap off the episode so that should really wreck the clout of the landowners by the time the next election rolls around um we are also looking to swap on to wealth voting in the meantime hopefully they don't assassinate our boyo but if they do assassinate our boyo it'd be what it be um also we have innovative, which is pretty nice on the tech spread front. That's actually a really good one to roll. So maybe we actually don't want to get rid of this gentleman yet, but we can at least swap onto wealth voting and keep him around. Um, we have, you know, started out with Transvaal. We've expanded in a few places, um, you know, mainly off the basis of the discrimination has been really rough. It's hard for us to get a good expansion force. And so this is kind of the best we could do is uh, this, this smattering over here. But the bigger kind of attraction or the bigger things to talk about are the gold and the discrimination. There's a lot of tiptoeing around kind of the discrimination start, which I think is pretty interesting. A lot of stuff has been smoothed out by just being in the UK's market because this means that we can turn on all the best PMs and this has helped us out tremendously. But a lot of us, what we've been doing has been kind of uh, tiptoeing around it. Now we haven't been full min-maxing kind of the exploit where we could swap to crude tools, get this place to employ up uh, under merchant guild ownership and then swap to privately owned. And perhaps we should be doing this, but it feels a little gamey. Uh, didn't want to do it other other than for popping uh, the atmospheric engine uh, event, which, because we really wanted that one for our infrastructure to get that going, shame on us. Uh, but the gold mines are driving 100% this is our economy. Our economy is gold. Uh, we are we have an income of 29k, uh, 26k, or we have an income of roughly 30k. 26k of that is from minting. So uh, this is the soup we're swimming in. We're swimming in the gold soup. And just to be clear, you can leverage this uh, if you just conquer Transvaal every run. And this is just a tremendous like. Look how much gold that is. That's so much free money. Now to be fair, a little bit of it's from uh, base value and a little bit is from GDP. Around 7,500 total is kind of uh, in independent of this, um, the, all the gold mines we have, and also a result of the, you know, the 5% bonus. So, so around 7,500. But the rest of that, the rest of that, that like 18k gold, you can get that on just about anyone if you just like open up the game by taking Gaza and then into Transvaal and fr uh, free stat. It's pretty good on anyone who's able to do it. And notably, um, before I used to think that taking Zulu was a little bit better, uh, but I've since noticed... Uh, there's malaria, uh, You there's no malaria here. So you can actually colonize north through Gaza. So getting Gaza is actually really useful uh, because it does allow you to have more frontage uh, when you do the colonization game. And to be fair, we have really nice frontage. Our problem, our problem is our, <laughs> Our incorporated population is 1.7 million, so it's not like we're gonna be colonizing very fast anyways, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, you know, do the YouTube algorithm thing. And other than that, have a good day.